All right, today we are going to be taking a look at two different kinds of camera bodies. We have rangefinders and SLRs, and this isn't going to be a which one is better and which one you should buy or a pros and cons video. This is more about perspective. So we're going to take a look at what makes each camera different, but more than anything, I want to talk about some of the smaller details that really come down to your own perspective and your own priorities because some things that I might consider a pro, you might consider a con. There's always a trade-off with this kind of thing. So we're going to take a look at each camera a little bit closer and just kind of compare them and let you guys make up your own mind. I'm not here to tell you which one is better and which one you should buy. I'm just here to tell you a little bit more about the differences. So let's get into it. We're going to start with the SLRs. This is the Nikon FM2, and this is by far my favorite SLR of all time. It's simple, it's reliable, it just works. There's a lot to love about this camera, but SLRs in general are all usually pretty similar. SLR stands for single lens reflex, and what that means is when you're looking through the viewfinder, you're actually looking through the lens. Inside the prism of the viewfinder, there are a series of mirrors that's going to show you exactly what's coming through the lens, and it's going to show you what your photo is actually going to look like. Whereas with a rangefinder, there is no mirror inside the camera body. What you're looking through is a viewfinder off here to the side, and you're actually using this little window with a patch in the middle, which is your rangefinder, and that's how you're actually going to focus and compose. That's the biggest difference between the two camera types, is how you achieve focus and what you're actually seeing when you look through the viewfinder. But again, there are all of these little things that really make up a bigger difference, and that's what I really want to focus on. So as I mentioned, when you're looking through the viewfinder of your SLR, you're actually going to see what's truly in focus in real time, and you're going to see that focus as it changes. This is great if your camera has a depth of field preview, which this one does. So let's say I want to stop the lens down to 5.6, f8. If I do that and I pull in on the depth of field preview, it's going to show me exactly how much that depth of field increases. Not only that, typically with an SLR, you can focus much closer. This is a 35 millimeter f2 lens, and I can focus down to 0.3 meters, whereas with a 35 millimeter f2.5 here on my M6, so I can definitely get in closer with the SLR, which is great for me if I'm shooting photos of the family. I like to get in close, and anytime I really want to focus on a more specific, you know, detail and get in close and really fill the frame, it's easier to do with an SLR because you usually just simply can't with a rangefinder. Not only that, if you're looking to pick up a 35mm camera, specifically one that you can change lenses, you're usually going to find an SLR body much cheaper than you would find a rangefinder body. There are a lot of cheaper rangefinders that you can pick up that have a fixed lens, but if you want to be able to swap lenses in and out, you're usually going to be paying a lot more on a rangefinder than you would on an SLR. And if you are going to be switching lenses on your SLR, especially moving towards longer lenses, it's going to be helpful having an SLR because you're going to be seeing that focal length change in real time and actually looking through the longer lens, whereas on a rangefinder, if I throw on a longer lens, the viewfinder that I'm looking through doesn't change. What changes is the frame line, so it's giving me an idea of what my frame is, but I don't actually see that same compression that I would if I were looking through the lens on an SLR. Another thing people really like to compare with a rangefinder and an SLR is the size, and you'll usually see people say rangefinders are so much more compact, easier to travel with, they're much smaller. That's really not the case for most camera bodies. The camera body itself is usually pretty similar between a rangefinder and an SLR. However, the lens size, that's where you're really going to see a much bigger difference. Just by design, rangefinder lenses can can be made much smaller, so you're usually going to see a smaller rangefinder lens in each format than you would if it were an SLR lens. Me personally, that's one thing I love about rangefinders is how small the lenses are. It's great having a smaller footprint as I just always have a camera with me, usually just strung across my body. Uh, having an SLR, sometimes the lens obviously does stick out a lot further. That might not be a big deal to you, but it is usually one of the biggest differences. And again, it is all about perspective, so some of the things that make the SLR so great, it also can be reasons why the rangefinder might be a better option for you. I'm not looking through the lens with a rangefinder, so I can't actually see my focus in real time, and again, some people might see that as a drawback, but what I really like about this design is the focus is usually much faster for me on a rangefinder. Just having that tiny little patch in the center of the viewfinder, I can easily just pull focus from one end to the other, and as soon as I see it lines up, I just stop right there, and I can focus really, really quick, which is great for any kind of documentary work, taking photos of my family on a daily basis, two kids who never stop moving, that definitely helps. 
there's also no blackout. So on an SLR, when you take a photo, that mirror needs to move out of the way in order to expose the film. So you get this blackout basically where everything is completely covered because the mirror is no longer showing you what's through the lens and that's why everything goes black when you take the photo. With a rangefinder, there is no mirror. You're not looking through the lens, so you don't have blackout. You actually see the exact moment that you take the photo, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but for me, it really does make a difference and it just makes me feel a little bit closer to whatever it is I'm photographing. You also get less camera shake because there is no mirror inside the camera that bounces. So as you're shooting slower handheld shutter speeds, for me, I can shoot slower speeds with my M6 than I could with my FM2. And it's also just a tiny bit quieter because there is no mirror in there bouncing around. And it's interesting because one thing I love about SLRs is, is that I can see what my focus actually is. So it's great for portraits. It's great for being able to really focus on specific details and see that depth of field in real time. But for me, I also love the aspect of a rangefinder where everything is in focus as I'm looking through the viewfinder. It can be really easy to use depth of field and shallow depth of field specifically as a crutch for composition. If there's something that's distracting in the frame, it's really easy to just open your lens up, throw it out of focus, and you don't have to worry about it. With a rangefinder, you're seeing everything in focus through the viewfinder because you're not looking through the lens. So everything is sharp, everything is in focus, and it really makes you think a little bit more about how you layer things, what you place behind certain objects in your composition. It really made me think a lot differently about composition when I first started shooting with a rangefinder. Especially if you're not gonna be taking advantage of that depth of field preview with an SLR, you might be stopping the lens down to F8, but as you're looking through the viewfinder, it's staying wide open. So you might not realize how distracting a certain element might be that's in the background because when you get your film back, you're gonna see it much more in focus and sharper and that could actually change the photo and what you really envisioned. Again there are all of these little things that make these cameras so different but at the same time it can be pros and cons for each person. It really does come down to what your shooting style is and what your priorities really are. I use both of these cameras together all the time. I just finished a project where I shot everything on Ilford HP5 and these two lenses and they both have 35 millimeter lenses so you're seeing essentially the same kind of field of view, the same film, same film format in all of these photos, but I used each one for different reasons. If I wanted to focus on something a little bit closer, I would use my FM2 because that design lets me focus closer. But if I needed to focus quicker, or if I was really particular about the composition and how I was layering things, especially if I was stopping the lens down, then I tended to grab my M6 for stuff like that. On a day-to-day -day basis, I definitely use my M6 for most stuff, but I do always have the FM2 loaded and ready to go at the same time because I never know when I'm gonna need some of the strength of the FM2 that the M6 might fall short in. If I need a faster shutter speed, if I need to focus closer, again, those are things that I just naturally grab the FM2 for, whereas other things, if I need to shoot really quickly, I'll grab the M6. It's just a different shooting experience from each camera and each camera type, but again, that's where it really comes down to personal preference and your own priorities. And there are so many different cameras to choose from. These are just the two that I use on a daily basis, so I'm not saying that the FM2 is the SLR or the M6 is the rangefinder. These are just the two cameras that I'm most familiar with that I use on a daily basis, but there are tons of different rangefinders and SLRs out there that are also going to have different strengths and different weaknesses. So I really hope this video on rangefinders and SLRs was helpful for you. If you're new to film photography and you're seeing all these different camera options, I hope this maybe answered some questions for you. And if you're not, maybe you just enjoyed it all together anyway. I really hope you did. I hope you guys are all doing well. If you have any questions or thoughts of your own on all of this stuff, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe if you're new. We have new videos every Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but that's it for today. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.